Hello and welcome. My name is Don Moore and I invite you to participate with me through your imagination and the retelling of the Christmas story, the birth of Jesus. Now we've all heard that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Israel. Uh, we're familiar with the nativity scene. There's uh, the barn or maybe even a cave sometimes. Uh, there's animals. There's a feed trough that uh, we know as the manger. There uh, are the wise men. There's Joseph, of course. And he's hovering and watching over Mary and the baby Jesus. But somehow, the reality of it all still seems to elude us at times. We've kind of made it into a fairy tale. And it seems like it happened so long ago and so far away that uh, we have a hard time making it our own. So today, I would like to change the scenery from two perspectives. The first is, as a man, I've never experienced the joys of childbirth. And while Mary certainly was the central figure doing all the labor, Joseph was a real man with real feelings. They're experiencing with his wife the birth of their first child, their oldest son. Now secondly, while I'm not real familiar with Israel, and a lot of us haven't gotten to visit Israel yet, I'm real familiar with Texas because this is where I was born and raised. Now Texas may be almost as foreign to you as Israel, but I'm hoping that by changing the scenery, we can make the story of the birth of Jesus feel a little bit closer to home and a little bit more real for us. Now, you've been watching me put on a couple of uh, uh, pieces of clothing for cowboys. The first of those were uh, my cowboy boots. Now, the cowboy boot was a very practical piece of clothing. It helped protect the lower part of the cowboy's legs from thorns and thistles as the cowboy rode through the brush of Texas. Those pointy toes that people have made fun of were pointed so they could go easier, slip easier into the stirrup of, on a saddle. And also, while I've got walking heels on these boots, the uh, heels, uh, riding heels on a boot were longer and more angled to make it very difficult for them to slip all the way through uh, the stirrup. Because if the cowboy's foot slipped all the way through the stirrup, the horse got spooked, bucked the cowboy off, and his foot was trapped in there, he could get drugged to death. Now I put on this vest, and while it could be a dress-up piece of clothing, a vest could also protect the body from unfriendly vegetation, and of course it held in body heat if a cowboy was having to work outside in cold weather. Now, the bandana, or the wild rag as some people call it today, uh, could I add some color to the cowboy's clothing? And you'll see that uh, this one is colored like the state flag of Texas, but it was much more practical than that. It was worn around the cowboy's neck, and uh, of course the cowboy could use it to uh, wipe the sweat off his uh, face, keep it out of his eyes. But if a cowboy happened to be on a trail drive or driving some horses and he was riding drag, which means he's behind them and the herd is kicking up dust, then he can pull that up over his mouth and nose and keep that dust out of his mouth and nose. Could also be worn like this during the winter time to protect his face from cold. Even could be worn to protect his face from what seemed like ever-present sun. Now besides boots, the one indispensable piece of clothing for a cowboy was his hat. Hats could be made out of straw, of course, leather, even strong cloth like canvas. But the most popular hats were made out of felt, usually wool, that was pressed together and shaped by steam. Now, while the shape of the hat could be as distinctive and different as the personality of the cowboy that wore it, after a few years, or maybe even a few months, the shape of the hat began to reveal the wear and tear that it had at the hands of the cowboy who was wearing it. There's one other practical use for a hat. In Texas on the trail, there might be a place where you have some water available, but it really is inaccessible to your horse. So the cowboy could take his hat, fill it with water, bring the water to the horse rather than take the horse to water, and that way keep his horse refreshed and ready to travel. Now one other thing I want to mention is that why would I depict Joseph as an older gray-haired man married to a woman perhaps who was still in her teen years? 
Well, there's two main reasons for that. One is, I'm an older gray-haired man, so I'm not going to try and depict myself as a 20-year-old cowboy. The other more important one in one sense is that historically, for hundreds of years, and still in some societies today, younger women are married to older men because the older man has the financial capability to sustain uh, a wife and family. Also, if there was a bride price or a dowry, it's sometimes called, that needed to be paid from the groom to the bride's family, an older man was more likely to have the money that the bride's family was interested in than a younger man. So there were some financial things involved there as well. So that's why in this particular play, Mary is going to be married to an older man, Joseph. You are involved with me in retelling this story set in Texas now in a time before automobiles and before hospitals. I call it Joe's First Christmas, and I hope you enjoy it. Come on, get up, you miserable excuse for a burrow. Ah, okay, Mary Beth, I tell you what, you kick him in the rear end and I'm going to pull. We're going to try and get this uh, jug headed piece of junk on his feet. Come on here. Come on. Uh, uh, God damn it. I knew that that double dealing donkey trader was lying to me. I should have looked this burrow in the mouth. I trusted him. He told me this was a, a young creature. Well, Mary Beth, I'm telling you, this burrow was an eyewitness to the creation. Well, Mr. Burrow, I'm going over here and I'm getting me uh, a fence post and I'll tell you what Mr. Burrow you're either gonna get up or you're gonna go down for good what calm down Mary Beth well what makes you think I'm mad anyway well I am a little bit touchy but now Mary Beth wouldn't you agree with me that the last few months have been just a little strange I mean I know they've been hard on you hun but my nerves are about shot too I, I mean think about it there we were preparing to get married. Everything seemed perfect till you turned up pregnant. I know, I know now, honey, it was the Holy Spirit, but you got to admit that story seemed a little thin to my folks and me when we first heard it. I mean, my mama liked to have herself a conniption fit when I told her, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, Mary Beth. I'm just saying that your reputation was not exactly immaculate in town in those days. I, I know, that, don't cry, honey, don't cry. I'm just saying it's been hard on all of us. I mean, I still remember there I was laying in my own bed, sound asleep, and all of a sudden I'm aware that there is a bright light in my room. I look up to see a big sucker standing at the foot of my bed. I mean, he was taller than I am on horseback. I'm looking for something to protect myself. And then he says, Joe, God sent me. Don't be afraid. I ain't here to hurt you. If I was, could have done it already. I'm still wondering, how does this fellow know my name? What's he doing in my bedroom when he says, Joe, Mary Beth is carrying God's baby and he's trusting you to protect her and to raise that boy right. Y'all call his name Jesus because he's going to be the savior of the world. By the way, Joe, I've cleared it with your parents. It's okay for you to marry Mary Beth. Well, I'll tell you what, Mary Beth, when I was cleaning out my long johns from that little fright, I got thinking about what he said about marrying you, and I sure was glad he said that, because I sure do love you. Oh, shucks. Just, I tell you what, we have got to make tracks to Brownwood. Can you believe that the governor would call for a census this time of year? I mean, they're already taxing us to death. Okay, okay, we got to get to Brownwood. Let's go. Come on, get in. Come on, Burrow. Come on. What was that, Mary Beth? Do what? You gotta go. You gotta go again? Mary Beth, look back yonder. You see that? We're still inside of the last place you went. Honey, at, the, at this rate, the boy's gonna walk into Brownwood on his own two feet. I know, I, I know. Being on the, the carrying that baby causes some changes in you. Well, I, I, I tell you what, you just find a spot to do your business. Uh, be careful, you know, there's cactus and Watch out, uh, keep an eye out for rattlers. I'm gonna just be right over here with the burrow. We'll give you a little privacy. Now, what was that squeal? You found a snake? No, a contraction. A contraction? Mary Beth, look around. 
This is no place for a contraction. We're 20 miles from nowhere. I know you didn't cause it. I'm just saying it's not going to happen here, okay? Now, you find a place to sit down and just relax, honey. Relax. You know, keep this to yourself. You can do it, babe. I'm going to tie up this poor excuse for transportation. I'll be, I'll be right back, okay? God, this is Joe. You know, the one that married Mary Beth. So I could take care of your boy. <clears throat> well, I don't mean to horn in or nothing, but uh, you know, this is no place for a baby to be born. I mean, if he was my boy, if you get my drift, I think I'd find some place with shelter for the mother and the baby instead of them being born in the middle of nowhere. Well, <clears throat> not that I've had much to say about it so far. Mary Beth, how you doing? You feeling better? You feel like you can travel? Oh, I, I was just having a little heart to heart with the Lord, you know, praying. Uh, yeah, can you travel? At our girl, let's get you up. Come on. Ugh. Let's get you on this burrow. We got to make tracks to Brownwood. Come on, get in. Let's go. Yes, Mary Beth, I asked at the hotel. Yes, I went to the boarding house. Mary Beth, I have been to every place in Brownwood twice. And I'm telling you, there is no room for us inside in town. That's why I accepted this. I know, I know what's outside, but Mary Beth, it's under a big old tree. It's going to help shade us from the sun and even knock off a little rain if it falls. It's a little feedlot here that's a sod buster here on the edge of town. Invited us to stay at. He said we could even stay several days if we need to. I mean, look, Mary Beth, we got some straw here. We got some blankets. I mean, I know it's not what you were expecting, honey, but I tell you what, just sit down. Let me go get uh, our supplies off the burrow, and and you just try and take it easy, okay? We can make this work. Well, God, this is Joe again. Don't really mean to be telling you your business, but seems to me if that boy that's on his way over there is who you say he is, you could have found him better accommodations than this. I mean, being born in this type of situation out under a tree somewhere, you know, he could spend his whole life, maybe even die trying to convince people he's your boy. <laughs> I mean, that's the way I see it. But, you know, I just wonder, you ever do anything the easy way? How you doing, Mary Beth? That a girl, that's the spirit. Yeah, we're going to make this work. i tell you what, this, we've got this uh, nice little woods around us here. And look, you can even see those stars up through the, the branches there. Well, one of them's real bright, isn't it? Yeah, I tell you what, I got the supplies. I am not used to walking this far, so I'm going to take me a little shut-eye. You need the rest. Then I'm going to rustle us up some grub, okay? So you just take it easy there. I'm going to take it. I'm going to get me a few winks here, and then we'll get something to eat. All right. What was that? Oh. Mary Beth, are you, are you okay? Oh, good. Well, baby's coming. We'll get the baby's coming. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do now? I tell you what. Let's see. I'll get some hot water. That's what I'll do. I'll heat, I'll heat some water. Uh, why hot water? I don't know. It just seems like a woman always needs some hot water. Now, Mary Beth, I tell you what. This makes me a little shaky inside. So, you know, I've, ne I've seen many a cow calf, but uh, I've not been up close and personal to a uh, human baby being born, so you're going to have to help me. I, well, I know I'm going to help you, but, I mean, you got to give me some pointers here, okay? And then I'll do the best I can. Lord have mercy, I wish we had us a midwife, and I wish I was somewhere else. Now, I just was telling myself it's going to be okay. We're going to make this work. We're used to making do with what we have, okay? Mary Beth, it's been a long road. You're doing great. I'll tell you what, we're almost at the end of the trail here, I believe. I think one more push is going to do it. Yes, if you can do it one more time. I think one more push is going to do it. There you go. Okay, come on, Mary Beth. Come on. I got him. I got him. Oh, there he is. Look at that. My goodness gracious. Oh, woo-wee. He is beautiful, Mary Beth. And so are you. Yes, sir, Reebok. Get him wiped off here a little bit. My goodness. Uh, i tell you what. Look at him, Mary Beth. He's perfect. Yes, he is. Woo! Oh, boy, it's good to have you. 
And Mary Beth, I think he's looking for you. Wow, you know, this is this is amazing. Uh, you know, I've you women folk usually take care of all this baby birth and stuff, and I mean, to see it with my own eyes, there's the baby, there's you, there's this blood and, and stuff, and whoo, I mean, I feel a little, uh, a little light in the head here, honey. I think I, I think I better take it easy before. Whoa, what happened there? Whoo, what was that? <laughs> well, I guess a little too much excitement for this old cowboy. How you doing, honey? Well, I tell you what, let me take him. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, Mary, you get some sleep. I'm going to see if that, I can kind of rock this little guy to get some shut out here. And uh, that's all right now. You be quiet. Shh, baby. Little guy, don't you cry. Your mama's sleeping close by. Yeah, she's right there. Oh, shh. Let's see. <clears throat> a lot of people would sing a lullaby. What would that sound like? Okay. Hmm. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Your mama sleeps close by. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Your mama sleeps close by. Shh. I'm your father. You're my son, and yet you're not mine at all. Your real father is the Lord above. You'll answer his higher call. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Your mama sleeps close by. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Shh. Mama sleeps close by. Laid in a manger to sin, you're a stranger, and yet it's for sin you will die. Came down from heaven, Emmanuel. God loves you. <laughs> so do I. Hush, out of boy. Your mama's right close by. Atta boy. Shh. Well, look at here. We've got some riders coming on by. They, boy, they even got a mule train with them. And, oh, they're pulling up here. Well, howdy. Where y'all from? Oh, well, you've been on the trail a while then, haven't you? Who'd you come to see? Oh, really? Well, y'all crawl on down. I'll make some introductions here. Just a minute. Mary Beth, Mary Beth, wake up. Wake up, Mary Beth. I know, I know you need to sleep, but there's some people here you want to meet. I don't rightly know their name, but uh, you'll want to you'll want to meet them. They've been on the trail a long time, and they got a string of pack mules, they say, loaded with presents for the, the newborn king. Reckon they're talking about our boy, huh? What do you think about that? Okay. You gents come on over here, and uh, let me introduce you. <clears throat> this here is... Mary Beth, my wife, and Mary Beth, these boys say that uh, that bright star up there led them all the way from, uh, I believe it was Virginia and, and Massachusetts and uh, Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah, that's something, isn't it? And uh, they say they're here to meet the new king. Well, boys, this is Jesus. And uh, Mary, you take him. Here you go. Now, you folks come on over here and pay your respects. And uh, Mary Beth, I'm just... I'll be right over here. I'm just going to look at these magnificent horses and this this uh, fancy tack that they're riding. Well, Lord, this is Joe again. Should have known you were going to pull it off like you said you would. I heard you done some outlandish things, but I do believe this beats them all. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't think I'd have seen it, believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Although I got a suspicion I'm going to have to learn to trust you for some things I can't see with my own eyes. You know, Lord, I don't always get it right, but you seem to find a way to use me. I sure do appreciate that. I got to think about what you said about that little boy over there and being the savior of the world. And You know, I look up my own life and I realize that more than more money, better learning, 
better laws, better leaders, we sure do need a Savior. Well, God, I ain't too good with words, but thanks for letting me be a part of this. And I sure thank you for Mary Beth. She's a mighty fine woman. Lord, more than anything, I thank you for the Son. And I thank you for watching Joe's First Christmas.